Okay, let's see if I can do a little better this time. So, now we are going to talk about a two-layer perceptron. And the idea there is that now you have two layers of processing for your inputs. So what's going on here is that X1 and X2 are inputs to Y1 and Y2 and they uh, both mix together at the level of each of these um, next layer neurons in your perceptron. But then there's another step now where Y1 and Y2 themselves are provided as inputs to the final output neuron in this perceptron. And just this simple act of adding what's called a hidden layer, which I'll designate with this red box here. This is our hidden layer. Really opens up a world of possibilities as far as the functions that such a multi-layer perceptron is capable of implementing. We can now implement, for instance, an XOR function, which you will show on your homework. Okay. And really, we've moved beyond linear separability. So that if I have some inputs that I need to separate somehow uh, with more than just a straight line or a plane through the space of inputs that I'm presenting, I can do that by having multiple layers now to carry out my computations. And so the truth table, for instance, for an XOR operation given x1 or x and x2 requires that if I have 1 1 then my output is 0 if I have 1 0 my output is 1 if I have 0 1 my output is 1 0 0 my output is 1 okay and in order to implement sort of these two cuts through the space of inputs, I need an additional layer to do that, which you will show. Okay, but let's consider maybe a simpler problem just to demonstrate our case. Let's say we want the above perceptron to spit out z equals 1. if x1 equals 1 and z equals 0 if x1 equals 0 or 2. So now x1 we're taking to be a ternary variable. It can be 0, 1, or 2 and we're just going to completely ignore x2 just to make this simple. So if we draw now a truth table for our operation that we want, given that x1 is 0, 1, or 2, okay, we want our output to be 0, 1, or 0. Again, this 
is a process that requires two lines, basically, through our space of possible x1 inputs, suggesting we can only do it with a multi-layer perceptron, just a two-layer perceptron. So as an exercise, you can try and implement this with just a single-layer perceptron, but you'll probably soon find that you can't. So, um, in order to do this, let's write down our diagram for our multi-layer perceptron now, just to orient ourselves. So we have that x1 is going to feed into y1 and y2, and then these will feed out into j1 and j2 to z, and they'll have their own biases. And let's write down all the equations for y1 and y2 and z. So again, we'll use a heavy side nonlinearity to try and make things simple. W1 x1 plus theta1 is the argument that goes into the y1 neuron. y2 takes as inputs w2 x2 plus theta2 and then z now is just a downstream neuron that takes j1 y1 plus j2 y2 plus we'll call it eta will be z's threshold so how do we implement this operation that we want this operation here okay our little classification of x1's possible inputs well what we can do is we can make it so that y1 is 1 if x1's greater than 0 and y2 is 1 if x1's less than 2 and then essentially what we can do is and these outputs together. So see if you see what I'm doing here. Essentially I'm saying in order to get that my output is only 1 if x1 is greater than 0 and x1 is less than 2, I'm going to have y1 just be a discriminating neuron to tell me if x1 is greater than 0, y2 to be a discriminating neuron to tell me if x1 is less than 2, and then z will tell me if just y1 and y2 are both 1. So you can see that this more complicated operation can be broken down essentially into linear discrimination and um, just an AND operation, which we know a single step or layer of a perceptron can do. So let's see if that works. So in order to try and implement this, we'll take w1 is equal to 1, so that um, as x1 increases, the input to y1 will increase. But because we want to worry about um, x y2 only being 1 if x1 is small enough, we'll actually have y2 be minus 1. And then we need to sort of hand tune the thetas in order to get the right outputs. So if you think about it, if we look here at the arguments into y1, when x is 0, we want that output to be 0, so we just need to select a theta that's less than 1. But as soon as x1 is 1, we want the output to be, um, the, the input to be greater than 0. So we don't want to put, pick theta uh, 1 to be too small. So we'll take theta 1 to be equal to minus 0.5. And theta 2 now 
we want the argument into y2 again to be positive as long as x2 is less than 2 and we can make that happen as long as um, in this case we'll take theta 2 equal to 1.5 and then the last step is to do the AND operation of the Z, but let's just check that we have what we need at the level of this first step in the layers. So if we zoom ahead, if we look at what happens with Y1, we see that when um, X1 equals 0, then we have that minus 0.5 is less than 0. So the output of Y1 will be 0, which is what we want. When x1 is equal to 1, then we have 0.5 is greater than 0. And when x2 is equal to 2, we have that 1.5 is greater than 0. So again, what we want there. In the case of y2, when x1 is equal to 0, then I have 1.5, which is greater than 0. When x1 is equal to 1, then we have 0.5, which is greater than 0. And when x1 is equal to 2, we have minus 0.5, which is less than 0, which is what we want. So by um, just hand-tuning the weights and the thresholds, we're able to get the linear discrimination that we want. There's more sophisticated algorithms for doing this, um, but uh, this is this sort of guessing and refining is usually sufficient for small feedforward feed forward networks like this because there's multiple solutions and to the same problem. And then for Z, we're just going to take the AND operation that we worked out from before. And if you remember that, if we map that now forward to the parameters that we're using now, we have that um, J1 equals J2 should equal, let's say, 0 0.7, and uh, eta should equal minus 1. And that'll give us the AND operation that we need. So that's it. Um, like I said on your homework, you're going to check out how to work out um, an XOR operation in a two-layer network like this. And you can use this same sort of guessing and refining uh, technique in that case, too.